We like to call the Northeast the tailpipe of America because all the weather systems actually exit through the Northeast. Um, so whether it comes from southern Canada, the Midwest, or even the Gulf of Mexico, um, a lot of these systems move through New England. Um, and because of how the heating and the cooling works on the planet, the mid-latitudes of the Earth tend to be a focal point for storms. And the Mount Washington uh, Observatory, Mount Washington, sits at 44.27. Uh, for latitude, which puts us right in the mid-latitude. So you get this really big uh, conversion zone between heating at the equator and cooling from the poles. And the way that the Earth wants to be at equilibrium is these big storms. Um, so that brings a lot of weather patterns our way. But there's also some orographic effect um, and just the nature of it being winter the atmosphere has different boundaries to it, or layers of the atmosphere, if you will, uh, much like a layered cake. And that bottom layer is where most all of our weather happens. And in New England, because it's cold and we're closer to the, the sea surface, um, the tropopause is what we call this boundary, it tends to be lower. And then even below that, there's the boundary layer. Uh, it's called the planetary boundary layer. And below that reference where all the weather happens. For us, we happen to be right at that level where sometimes we cross below it and sometimes we're above it. When we are above it, we're in the free atmosphere, so much like where the planes fly. Um, and if you've heard of the jet stream, um, the planes fly through the jet stream. Sometimes they go slow if you're going west and it goes really fast if you're going the east. Um, so while we're not that high, the jet stream tends to be up you know, tens of thousands of feet above us at 250 millibars, there's a lower jet streak that tends to come by us. Um, so we get these jet streaks in these system that cross right over the mountain. Um, but then there's the orographic effect. So there's a vertical and horizontal compression of the winds. So just like when you put your thumb over a garden hose, um, the water comes out at a faster rate. Well, it's the same thing with the winds. Um, or another example would be a river or a glacier moving through a tighter spot it has to deform and move faster because you're trying to move the same amount of mass through the same volume. Um, so that's what happens here. The wind actually gets compressed by this vertical boundary layer lowering and it gets compressed by the mountains as it moves over the summit. So our winds can be really extreme. Um, there's a lot of moisture because the northeast obviously sits along the coastline. So we get very dry continental air masses that come down from Canada, um, which when they meet a very humid air mass is, sends all sorts of destruction in the atmosphere. Um, and that happens to be centered in New England. So a lot of times we'll see these storms really bomb out. Uh, Bombo uh, cyclogenesis is kind of the, the term for it. But these storms really go under some explosive development in the Northeast where they don't elsewhere in the country um, or in the world. The only other place that experiences storms like this would be um, northern Japan or eastern China and that southern section of Russia because they have the same uh, geological and geographic setup.